Hi everybody, please support our local businesses in this time of need. Please keep everything local. Thank you very much for your help. Hi everybody, how you doing? And welcome to the Mersey Concept, Stephen Merg here. And today I'm with Ian Butcher, professional boxer. And uh, I've known Ian actually since he was a wee boy, by the way, but I've got a story there, we'll come back to on that one later on. Ian, how are you, mate? I'm not bad, Stevie, yourself. Came good. Hi, how are you coping with the whole lockdown thing? What's been this this is the thing that people seem to be saying when they're coming on. How lockdown affects them in different ways. Has it been good for you, been bad for you? Uh it's been no bad. I'm quite an active guy, so try to be in the house a lot with the social distance and all we're doing stuff at the very beginning was quite hard because obviously I'm I'm used to working and going to the gym and stuff, so it was kind of hard to to just sit in the house and stare at four walls basically. I am I'm the same, mate. It was just you know it's like I'm not used to being out, out, out all the time, you know, and I'm not used to talking to folk. But a plus came out it was this thing here, and I I, I clocked that Zoom thing, so that was that was a plus for me. But, mm -hmm. but Ian, Ian. What made you get into boxing? What made you start boxing? Uh, believe it or not, obviously I come from a wee scheme, so I used to see the older ones um, going down to the gym, going down to the boxing gym, and just kind of for there, I just followed on suit. My big brother done it, um, Edward, he did it, so I just kind of followed suit, tried to get in the gym. Obviously I was too young at the time, don't come back when you're older, blah, 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 and just kind of, done that for a wee while and then kind of got to the age where I was allowed in the gym because I'd got older and stuff and just mm -hmm. just kind of took it to be, to be fair when I first went in the gym it wasn't any serious it was just like going, thought it was a place to get in and muck about kind of thing but uh, yeah. it just followed suit for there basically What do you think of young ones taking up boxing mate? And how young do you think they should start? Um. It all really de de deserves on a personality. Um, I would say if you're if you're serious about the sport as young as possible, um, it, great discipline, great to get off the streets. Um, I know boxing's a violent sport, but it, it doesn't teach that sort of thing. It's a uh, most gyms you get into nine times out of ten the coaches will not entertain any sort of bullying or right. yep. they'll, not, they'll, not, they'll, they'll give you a good discipline level. Like they'll tell you what's right, what's wrong. And, I, and a lot of coaches I've dealt will also tell you if you're ever in trouble out in the street, not to bring your boxing th stuff through yep. it. Like, yep. try and avoid it as, as much as you can, basically. Well, we used to always get taught in martial arts years ago, you know, different sort of constitutions in a certain way, but the same as it was always in defence of law and order, you know. But at the end of the day, there's somebody swinging punches at you. You're not going to say, you, you're not going to say stop, are you? You're not going to say stop. Aye. That's the reality, and that's what I'll That's the reality. You know, you've got to defend yourself for there. But your first fight, Ian, when did your first fight start to come up? How did that come about? Um, to be, the, the, amateur. My first, amateur. Fight, I, my first fight actually was a, an unexpected thing. I'd went up to uh, New York Hall ABC um, with my cousin at the time, my uncle, and um, my older brother, Eddie. Um, I was just kind of there floating about, just what to be a kind of about the kind of people. Um, a lot of people tell me to get in here and I never bothered with it mm -hmm. and then um, I went down to the Jefferson Boxing Club I was maybe only in there six weeks if six weeks yeah. and the guys at the, the club at the time were like can you can you box for us basically mm -hmm. and I wasn't aged at the time you need to be 11 to have a, a boxing fight and right. I was due to turn 11 just previous just think mm -hmm. it was a week or two weeks previous to it mm -hmm. so we kind of had to have a rush to get a boxing card um, I already could have done basically the, everything that I needed to box. We kind of done all that last minute, like the week of the fight, got that all registered, pushed through, and I boxed on the, on the, the home club show. Um, yep. Maybe as I say, maybe about six weeks after being in the gym. Yep. 
See, the thing is, Eddie, right? Eh, eh, sorry, Eddie, just when you said Eddie there. Um, we'll come back to Eddie because I wanted to mention Eddie. It? Um, the thing is, Ian, is I done a, a, a wee sort of a, a podcast a few weeks ago there regarding fear. And it was fear regarding walking into the ring. I don't know if you saw it or no, but a wee, a wee skim where it was was really as waking up the day of the fight and how you feel. Now, I know you're for the streets. I know, I, I, I know, I know you, you know what I mean? So I know, you're, I know that you, you can take care of yourself and all that be there. But did you, did you feel that uh, a couple of boxers were saying that to me that it was the exact same? Walking into the ring, did you feel that fear of, wow, I'm walking in here? How did you feel? Um, the walk into the ring is actually, um, that's probably more scary than actually being in the ring. For, for me, I, I, I was a nervous wreck. Every yeah. single fight I had, I was a nervous <laughs> wreck before I went into the ring. Nervous, I was the same. <laughs> nervous as hell. And then, and then f- first bell goes, it just kind of took care of business itself. God. It was just like, God. it was no nerves there. You're just, your head set on, on doing what you've been trained to do. Um, right. But that's probably the most scariest two minutes of your life for going through your changing room to, to, the, to the ring. You don't know what people's thinking. You yeah. don't know what's going to happen. It's just, it's a stage fright kind of thing. Um, but, but I was right. always a nervous wreck, always. You're and it didn't matter if, if I bought somebody I was 10 times better or somebody that was better than me. It didn't matter yeah. the level of opponent it was. It was always the same same scenario for the ring walk. But what I said in the podcast, Ian, was, was you don't mind about getting your jaw smashed up, chinned, whatever. You don't mind. I never minded any of that. But no man wants to get beat. No man wants to no. get beat. And that's, that, no. was the fear, that was the fear side. But you're just explaining what I said, and that's quite good because that ties in way what I say because I've not done anybody on since that be there. But so your career, your 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 your, your um your what do you call it, your amateur career, did you ever think you were going to turn professional? I, I always say to myself I would I would like to. Um but kind of the changing point happened when I um I think it was fourteen. I think I was fourteen and I was going to box a boy that had beat me previously but I'd also beat him. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like a third fight and it was to see who got to win the Scottish Championships but represent Scotland in the, the, the GB Championships for Great Britain. Yep. But I didn't know that at the time. I was obviously just young, just thinking it was another fight. Mm-hmm. I beat the boy and then it was like a box stone name. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of got the, the turning point where I was chosen to represent Scotland, but not just the, the weight I was boxing at, the weight above. Yep. Because I could beat the boy at the weight above. So I was getting kind of two opportunities. And then I got I got the call for the Olympic team, the, the GB squad down in, in, in Sheffield. Kind of for their onwards, I kind of thought if I could do well doing the get a good account of myself, I could probably have a go boxing professional. I always think I, I was always I was never ever scared. I, as you say, you would always get in there and you don't want to lose, but you were never ever feared to go in there, whether you were going to lose or no. You, you always had that wee bit about that you were going, but you always wanted to prove that you had a wee bit more than just balls basically you yep. always wanted to prove like I was clever I could use my brain and stuff yep. so yep. I always did have my sights set on turning professional it yep. was just depending how it turned out with, with tournaments and what medals mm-hmm. what, what sort of professional deal was offered to you at the time Who was your hardest amateur fight? Um, box, I boxed a lot I c- to be fair, I kind of get the f- the short story when I, when I turned senior. My first um, my first senior fight was against Paddy Barnes. That was my first ever senior fight. Um, I go to him, and I lost by one point. That that was a tough mm-hmm. tough one to take because I was just a young boy at the time. I just hit the level in the age to box senior, and he'd been boxing senior, been to Olympics. He was he was like the top boy can at the weight. Um, yeah. go to him and then I got another tough boy previous uh, he'd previously boxed Paddy and beat and, and bad and pa- he'd beat Paddy as well in the Olympics mm-hmm. um, he was I think he was for Kenya or something like that he was a physically he was physically a strong guy um, and I, I, I could outbox him 12 rounds quite comfortable he mm-hmm. was just too physically strong for me at the time I was just a boy yeah. and he was a man that was, that was a tough fight like, yeah. physically for me to take that was that was hard graft. Just as I said, I was ten times better than the guy, but he was just physically too big a man for me at the time. Well, the thing and is, that's just hurting me. That's weird you saying that because in the gym we have these, we have an, an array of conversations all the time, you know, blah 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 for there, and it's always one that always does crop up. You just said it there was, 
um, when you're younger, um, like um, when you're tr- when, when you like for talking sake, I had a fighter say 16 years of age, and the first thing he would always ask you is, "What age is this guy?" Oh, I don't know, he's 25, 26, and psychologically they would drop. Do you believe that age plays a factor? Do you believe you've got that man factor in your head? Like, he's a man, regardless of your skills, Ian, right? But Aye. there's always that, he's a man. Did you think that plays a wee bit with you as well, just what you were saying there? Uh, I, for, me, for me, it did. It, it always, like, I was 17, 18, and you pulled a guy, and he was 22, 26, 27. You always mm-hmm. used to say, that's a grown man. That's For mm-hmm. me, my older brother's five years older than me, so it was like, yeah. look, he's... He's older than my older brother, yep. physically. How am I meant to? And, I, and a, lot of, I, a, a lot of, to be fair, a lot of clever boxers don't have physical man strength. Right. They, they never ever adapt to getting physical man strength. Mm-hmm. Frankie Gavin was one of the most technical boxers ever that I've trained next day for a period. Mm-hmm. But he never, he never ever was physically strong. Yep. Everybody that he stoked as an amateur was all with a long distance in points. It was never ever physically going out and hurting them. Yep. He never ever got that yep. man strength where he could do that. So, and he was always young, like a lot of guys that he did box. He, mm-hmm. he was just clever enough to beat them, but a lot of the guys were physically stronger and could hurt him. If they, yep. if Frankie Gavin ever got hurted, it was with like one clean punch. Mm-hmm. So it was always like, yeah, kind of wee facts in there that state like if they are older, they have got physically more man strength than you. Yep. You have yep. as a young boy. For me, it personally, did like I always thought he's older, like. How am I meant to hurt a guy that's six, seven year older than me? He's mm-hmm. he's yep. been there, done it. He's box clever boxers all around the world, just the same. Aye, a lot of psychology in that. A lot of psychology in that, you know. Which um, when when I talk to a lot of fighters, that no lot of fighters seem to bring that one on board. It's um, mm-hmm. the top boxing, but the psychology aspects it doesn't really seem to come in it, which it has. Mm-hmm. The boxing is a whole chess game. But this is a question I was asking as well, a guy the other day there, um, uh, Lex Easton, world champion, multiple world kickboxing champion was you know tough fights and tough spars would you say you've had harder spars than fights sometimes aye probably my hardest spars have probably been tougher than the fights I've had yep a lot of the the reason being was because boys at my weight and my age or even just my weight majority of the time I was quite a when I go to senior level, I adapted man strength quite relatively fast. I got that man strength coming fast. And a lot of boys I was boxing, even in Scotland, I could hurt them. Mm-hmm. So a lot of boys, even at my weight, even if I wasn't going to box them again, I wouldn't get sparring with them. I was always boxing guys. I boxed at 48 kilos for a majority of my, my career as young. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I jumped up a weight. But it's only really about eight stone. I used to spar boys. Mm-hmm. Nine, nine and a half stone majority of the time. So yep. physically, even in the spars, I could be better than them. Yeah. But it was always a fight. To, I had to fight to keep them off me because they were just physically too big. Yep. If I caught them with one clean punch, it wouldn't really do nothing. Yep. It would just stop them on their track. But it wouldn't hurt them in a sense to get the respect that was needed. Yep. So I kind of had to always have a tough fight with them just in spar mm-hmm. to keep them off me. Ian, always when I hear your name, Eddie's name always comes in as well, you know, because um, am I right in saying that Eddie plays a part in your training? He played a massive part. Mm-hmm. What actually happened was I had um, two trainers, um, and f- for uh, other reasons, one of them with issues, he moved down south to London, Margate, um, and the other one had work commitments and he couldn't date anymore. Mm-hmm. So at that point, then I'd by Jake Glenny, he was at the club's representative at the time. He kind of says, "Look, I'll keep the club, but you kind of really need to get. We need to really look for new trainers, basically, to mm-hmm. take over the club." Yep. Um, and at that point, Eddie kind of helped me. Eddie yep. kind of just stood in, and as I say, he was young as well. He 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 wasn't experienced at coaching. But you always hear that. You always hear you and Eddie. Mm-hmm. I've I've always heard uh, you and Eddie. Always heard you and Eddie. You know. I've always seen that team. It's been good. But see, the the, the thing is that there was um, I'll, I'll, it's not even a disrespectful thing. Like I I don't believe I'm not saying it doesn't work for some. Like there's coaches out there who stone who's never put a pair of gloves on and they'll say do this and do that. They physically don't know how hard that is. Some days you have bad days, and they'll say, well, you did that the other day. But every day is different. Every, going, every day in different train. I'm going to agree so with you. Eddie bought. 
Eddie, Eddie, Eddie boxed. Mm-hmm. So, I, and although how young he is, he knows how physically tough it is to get yeah. and do that sort of thing. Even the training, the, the training, to see the fighting part, I loved every bit. Eddie mm-hmm. always says to me, "Train hard, and the fight will be easier." Yeah, and right. it was Eddie. Eddie was hard. I, I, I had a lot of respect for him training me, and mm-hmm. a lot of people say. No, really, it doesn't really work for families, but it did work. Oh, I no, had the respect I from. Can I be honest with you? And, and I always, I, there's, there's no filter on this, these podcasts, and there's nobody gets mm-hmm. buttered up. And I've been in a fight game since I was 14 years of age, mate. And, and you know, y- your names are brilliant, man. And this is not a buttered up podcast. Uh, you and Eddie, that was always you and Eddie. And Eddie, Eddie gets a good name. He does mm-hmm. get a good name. So that's what I was always hearing, Eddie, 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 all the time for there. It was good. But... Do you do you think it's essential for any trainer that they they must step in the ring at least once or twice before they coach, or do you think they just have the natural ability to? Well, I know what's what. What do you think? Um, I'm not I'm not saying that they generally need to have box, but they need to have some sort of knowledge where it's like I always say, Eddie. If I was ever hurted in a fight and I got dropped or someday. Physically, you could see I was hurted. Always give me the chance to, to um, get back up and beat that, like beat that sort of position I'm in. Let me fight on a wee bit. Yeah. If I'm getting hurted, throw in the towel. Like I know we're brothers, and I know you train me. Mm-hmm. Like, a, a trainer's got to have that. They can't have like I know people say never ever chuck it, but a trainer's got to have that responsibility looking after the boxer as well. Yeah. And yeah. there's a lot of yeah. trainers out there, even some trainers that have boxed. The mm-hmm. nine times out of ten, a lot of the trouble comes from trainers who have no box. Maybe mm-hmm. their father boxed or their brother boxed, but then they take on the, tr- the, the trainer's role. Yep. 